What is the most important question you can answer for someone who's considering hiring you to be a speaker? The answer to that question will be found in your next Daily Dose of Public Speaking Wisdom. In the first three videos of this mini-series, you've discovered three questions that people are thinking. They may not ask it out loud, but they're definitely thinking. Number one, do I like you? Number two, do you understand my pain? And number three, do you have the expertise or do you have a plan to solve my problem? The fourth question may be the most important. It's this, can I trust you? Isn't that a question that you have anytime you make a purchase, really of any size? Maybe a lawnmower over at Lowe's or, or uh, Home Depot, could be a car, could be a house, whatever the purchase. Isn't that a burning question inside of you? Can I trust this person who's selling me this item? How do you prove your trustworthiness? Well, as you've heard in the other videos, you don't stand in front of a group and say, trust me, I'm your guy or I'm your woman. Come on, I can do it for you. Not a good strategy. You convey trust through dialogue. A couple of quick examples from my days as a financial advisor. I would tell stories to prospective clients of people that I've worked with in the past. I talked about my clients, Bill and Diane, for instance. When I first met them, they, they were skeptical. And in one of our annual reviews, they said to me, you know, when we first met you a couple of years ago, we really weren't sure if we could hire you because we'd had some, we'd been burned by uh, previous advisors, uh, give, give us bad advice on college planning and our retirements. And we just didn't think we could trust anyone. But after working with you for a couple of years, Michael, we see that you have our best interests at heart. You're not just trying to sell us product. And we so appreciate the work you've done for us. Uh, even giving us advice on things you don't get paid on. That means a lot to us, and we, we really appreciate this relationship. Another example is one of my speech coaching clients, Patty. You've heard about her in other videos. Long after we had done our first set of work together, we were having lunch, and, and she said to me, I really appreciate what you've done for me. You worked with me. You took your, took your time. You didn't rush me. You got to know me. And I really developed a trust with you. So now when you tell me to do something, I do it, Michael, because I know that you're here to help me and not just sell me something. That's really all it takes. Brief dialogue from happy clients who do trust you. Don't make anything up. Take their words and put them into a quick story or vignette where you can share their experiences of how they've developed trust in you. Hopefully in these four videos, you've picked up a deeper understanding of how your prospective employer, not really employer, but person who would hire you or someone who wants you to come speak to their event, hopefully you have a better understanding of how they're thinking. Now here's what's interesting about their thought process. It is no different than yours or mine. We all have these same thoughts. There's nothing extraordinary about meeting planners where they think differently. No, they're human buyers just like the rest of us as you're developing your material and crafting that story that will sell you, make you stand out from other presenters who may be competing for the same job, answer those four questions. Number one, will I like you? Number two, do you understand my pain? Number three, are you an expert? Can you solve my problem? Do you have a plan? And number four, can I trust you? Answer these four questions and you're well on your way to being hired, not only as a speaker, but for any job or position that you apply for. I look forward to talking with you in our next Daily Dose of Public Speaking Wisdom.